Hello, and thank you for doing, joining today's Acuro EMR Tips and Tricks session on duplicate charts. Please feel free to ask any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. We're going to go over some of the ways duplicate charts are being created, how to avoid creating them, and what needs to go into merging them. The main reason duplicate charts can be an issue is that the patient's information is spread out amongst the different charts. Because of this important medical information may be getting missed, it also clogs up the EMR with unnecessary charts. The number one way we see duplicate charts being created is when offices are searching by their patient name. So for instance, here, if we search for this user, we are bringing up this patient, whereas we're looking for a different user, which comes up with lots of other options. So we've missed out on seeing the one user, just not user. Hello, thank you for joining today's session at the Curo EMR Tips and Tricks section on duplicate charts. Please feel free to ask any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. Today we're going to go over some of the ways duplicate charts are being created, how to avoid creating them, and what we need to do to merge them once they are created. The main reason this can be an issue is because patient information can be spread amongst multiple charts and it's a lot easier to just track down and keep all in one place. So one of the mo first ways that duplicate charts get created is when people search for names rather than health card numbers. So here we're searching for the patient's name and we get these two charts, but there's a specific one that we're looking for that's not coming up. So if I search by the patient's health card number instead, we get this one here that has the name spelt differently than everyone else. So by looking for that name, we're not going to bring up the correct chart. So that's one way that we typically see duplicate charts being created. And as you can see, when we search by health card number, we're getting all the charts associated with that health card number rather than just the ones with the same name. There's times when the health card number won't work. We do have some patients that are on student guard and don't necessarily have health card numbers and new babies and such. Um, but there are other ways that we can find those. So one way I like to search for the charts is by searching the birth date. So for instance, I know the birth date of this patient. And if we want to bring it down a bit, I always like to say less is more when searching for charts. So if we just do the first bit of the name, we can get the chart this way. So there is no health card number. I didn't have to search by name, so I didn't have to find if the if the chart is in there as BCFHT, if it's in as new baby, which we all see happen very often. So by searching the birth date and a little bit of the name if needed, sometimes with babies the, the birth date is pretty pretty easy to find. We get the patient's chart that we're looking for. Another way that we see duplicate charts being created is through lab matching. Sometimes you have to match a lab that's come in as unmatched and you have the option to add the new patient or select the patient that the chart needs to go to or the document needs to go to. And then we end up creating a duplicate by adding the patient. Sometimes you may come across charts that are in italics. So if we go to the health card number again, and I made it too long. 
you'll see charts that are in italics. This looks like it's a duplicate chart. However, it is the same chart. It is the same chart as another chart that we have here. So if we were to click on Melissa BCFHT, it's gonna take us to Jane. This is an, an alias, which down here you can see in the alias section, we've added Melissa BCFHT because she goes by Melissa. So these charts aren't mergeable. If it does become an issue, you can remove the alias if the patient no longer goes by it or you know they've just they've updated their documentation because um, typically we want the patient's chart to be the information that's located attached to their health card number. So if you have a patient whose health card number has their married name but they go by their maiden name, then you can come and create an alias. You can select the go by maiden name. And then that way, when you search for the patient's maiden name, you'll get their up-to-date chart with the correct information. If you don't need the alias anymore, you can come here and you can just click the red X. Are you sure you wanna remove the selected aliases? And we can just delete it. And then when we go to search for this patient again, yes, we wanna save the changes. Yes, yes. And we're just getting a bunch of warnings. Now we don't see the Melissa BCFHT alias. Another duplicate chart that you can come across is the red one. So red, typically means that the chart is inactive one way or another, or it could be a deceased patient. Now, just because the chart is put in as inactive does not mean that you can't use it. There's multiple reasons why a chart can be put as inactive. Um, if the patient has left that office, then some offices will mark the chart as inactive, stating that the patient is no longer active in their office. Um, sometimes patients move. So if your patient has moved out of province, you can select inactive moved. Um, and if the patient has moved back, so now you still have an old chart, it's just marked as inactive. So in the event that that happens and a patient has come back to province, you can just move them, move the status to active, and then we can start using that chart again. So just because a chart is inactive doesn't mean you can't use it. You can mark it as active. That way you don't have to create a new chart that's active and you'll have all the patient's previous medical records in the original chart. Any questions so far? So, Sometimes what can happen is because we're such a large group and there's so many providers and clinics and programs in our Carol, you might get a patient that's new to your office. But even though they're new, they already have a chart created. That can happen when a patient has gone to a walk-in clinic in Barrie. The walk-in clinics will create the chart. Now that patient already has a chart, you can use that chart. Even though they are new to your office, they still have an active chart in the system. So it's beneficial to keep them all together. That way, once again, all the patient's information is in one area that everybody pertaining to that patient's healthcare can have access to. So now that we've gone over a little bit of duplicate chart creations, I'll go over a little bit of what has to go into merging a chart. There are a few steps that we have to do. We have to verify that the chart is the correct chart. We have to verify that the information is up to date before we merge them. Um, and just little things like that. So one thing that happens is sometimes the patients have different information in their demographics. So as you can see here with our inactive Jane, she lives at 21 Wallaby Way. Our other Jane here lives at 123 Walkway. 
Now, when we merge these two charts together, only one of the demographics can stay. So typically what we do is we like to run an audit to see which chart was created first. When we do that, that's you, the first chart is usually the chart that we will use to merge the other chart into. Just because one's the original, that's the one we typically use. Otherwise, we, um, if you notify us which chart you would like to keep via the patient file number, that's the chart that we'll keep instead, assuming that the office is aware of which chart is the active one and which chart has the up-to-date information. So for instance, we'll look at our inactive Jane here who lives at 21 Wallaby Way. Let's say that this is her current address. This one has been updated most recently. Whereas Jane, the duplicate, um, lives at 123 Walkway and say that's her old address. So when we merge a chart, we go in, we go into the document so section, sometimes if needed, verify that that's the patient's chart, go into the audit logs, we have to verify that the patient is the same as when they were originally created just to make sure there wasn't any name changes and nothing has changed with the patient. Then we begin our merge. So right now what I'm gonna do is even though this Jane has one demographic information, we're gonna merge her into another chart. We're gonna move her into file number 623509. So when we hit merge, it's going to ask if we want to merge from the one chart into the other chart. If there's any conflicting information, we'll get a pop-up saying that we have to verify that information. We hit yes. And then we wait a moment till the merge is successful. Now we're just gonna go back and now we see here that we only have one Jane BCFHT duplicate chart with the 123 walkway. So sometimes the reason that we try to verify the that the office has the current address is because all that previous demographic information in the other chart won't get transferred over. So if our previous chart had a provider enrolled to her or him, when we merge it over, that provider information will be lost to that chart. So we always just ask that both of the charts have the same demographic information. That way there's no risk of anything being lost. Um, again, unless you state which chart you would like to keep. So that's usually what the steps we have to do to create a duplicate or to merge a duplicate chart. Um, we do investigate as to how the chart was created, whether it was created via uh, just someone creating a duplicate chart, probably again, searching by name rather than by the health card number. Um, Another one is it, it is it is extremely important to put the health card number in when the chart is created. We have had duplicates in the past created because um, someone in the office goes to search by the health card number and nothing comes up and assumes from there that there isn't a chart already created and creates a new chart. If you have a situation, especially with a new baby, where you tried the health card number and nothing came up, that's when you can use the birth date and try and pull the baby in that way. So that's how we merge, how we, usually how we see duplicate charts being created. Um, when you have a duplicate chart, you can email or you, you email the IT department at support at bcfht.ca. Let us know the file number. So the file number is located right here in the patient demographic area. Um, more recent users that have been created uh, will have a file number up in the 
top left hand side where your patient demographic information bar is. So it's this, typically it's a six digit number. We do have some that have some zeros ahead of it. The zeros are important to add as well. So send us both file numbers. Again, feel free to let us know which chart you would like to keep. That saves us a little bit of investigation when we're looking into merging. Um, you can do that just by saying, you know, I want to keep file number 623509. Please merge the other chart into that. And if anybody doesn't have any questions, thank you so much for watching this video. And it looks like I do have a question here. <clears throat> Sorry, give me one moment, just reading up on this. Okay, so if you do have a new baby coming in, parent isn't able to provide the health card, then we really should be, we really shouldn't be creating a chart or booking the appointment without having the health card. Um, the health card is the provider's assurance that the visit will be covered by OHIP. So if you don't have the health card number, you won't be able to submit the billing for that appointment. So it can, it can impact whether or not um, your provider gets paid for the service. So it is just important before booking appointments to get that health card number as well. Um, so not only does it help against duplicate chart creations, but it helps ensuring that you'll be paid for the visit as well. So if, mom calls in to book an appointment for the new baby and she doesn't have the health card, um, it's not recommended to create a chart. For, get that health card number first, tell mom that, you know, we need that health card number and once she has it, definitely call back in and you'll work on getting that appointment booked in for her. All right, thank you so much for attending and I hope you have a wonderful afternoon.